The Biden administration has announced a $162 million investment to expand chip factories in Colorado and Oregon as the U.S. continues to bet on American-made semiconductors. Joining us right now is Duke University Distinguished Professor Ronnie Chatterjee, who was most recently the White House Chips Coordinator. And, uh, sir, thank you for being here with us today. We are watching these announcements very eagerly to try and figure out what they all mean. What does this latest investment, what, what should we think about it? Well, this latest investment really emphasizes the Biden administration's commitment to supply chain resilience. You know, a lot of the attention with the CHIPS Act goes on the most cutting edge chips, those things that power artificial intelligence or your latest iPhone. But what's really important in the first two awards is microcontrollers and other older and legacy semiconductors that you find in automobiles, medical devices, in the grid. These are some of the things that were in short supply in 2021. And these two first awards, which are pretty small, this recent one, $162 million, are a preview for what's to come and are really focused on supply chain resilience and some key industrial sectors. That's what I see from the first two awards so far. It seems like it's taking an awful long time. I mean, it was 2022 when the CHIPS bill passed. It's been well over a year, and we're talking about $52 billion that was approved just in subsidies, another $24 billion in tax credits. Why does it feel like this stuff is just coming out? I mean, $100 plus million is a lot of money, but it does seem like it's taking a long time to get the, the money kind of doled out. Well, the $162 million will support two plants, expand and modernize them. But you're right, there's a lot more to come. You have about a dozen awards, according to Secretary Raimondo, that will come out in 2024. And I think some of the big ones that people are looking for, the really transformative bets on the future of the industry, that's likely what we're like, likely to get the news in 2024. These are big, complex deals. If it was the private sector, there would also be a lot of due diligence, a lot of back and forth and negotiations. And so I'm expecting to see a lot of action in 2024, but I'm not surprised that these initial awards have been smaller and really focused on the things that were connected to supply chain disruptions during the pandemic. That's a really important problem to solve. There was a news story earlier today that we were kind of looking through about Chinese companies saying they aren't interested in NVIDIA's slower AI chips, that they are now looking to Huawei and to in-house solutions for some of these chips. So when we look at security issues and think, okay, we're going to be able to maintain control over this, how long does that last? Well, you know, according to Huawei's recent product releases, they released a phone that got a lot of attention. They released a computer that got a lot of attention. The chips in that phone are about five years old and uh, really don't show that the Chinese are making up significant ground to be at the leading edge. It is um, a tight window, but five years is still way behind. If you look at the computer, the laptop that just came out, they were using a chip that was made in Taiwan in 2020. So I think you have some early evidence that these export controls, which are relatively narrow and not focused on commercial advantage, but really for national security, are working. But this is a situation we're gonna have to continue to monitor both at the advanced chips, the things that power AI, but also in the legacy, because the Chinese government has done this in other sectors before. They've plowed a lot of subsidies in the key sectors, cratered the market prices around the world, and put a lot of companies out of business. We have to watch the legacy older chips, the ones that power automobiles, the grid, medical devices. That's an area where the PRC is actually making massive investments. With I think there's 18 new chip factories starting in China this year. That's the area I focus on. Ronnie, how long until we're in a better position just in terms of controlling our, our own chips that we're manufacturing? Because not only does it take a long time for the awards, it takes even longer to build some of these foundries and other things. But when you look out, do you say 2026, we're going to be in a much more self-reliant position? Is it longer than that? Well, I think you're already seeing industry make a bunch of bets here. I mean, there's $166 billion or more that's been invested by the global chip industry in the United States. So companies are making those investments. They're making a bet that the American chip sector is back. In terms of when these factories are going to get built, these are huge CapEx investments. These are really complicated machine tools. I think it take, it'll take a couple of years for these factories to actually get up and running, build in all the equipment, and start producing at scale. But honestly, um, we need to start now because the deterioration of manufacturing in the chip industry took a long time to take hold, and it'll take a few years for us to come back. I like the track we're on. we got to keep watching these announcements, and I'm sure there's going to be uh, more exciting ones coming in 2024.